my name is James Yonan, and uh, I'm half Assyrian, half German. Um, my father was Ormid Naya, Assyrian. Um, his parents, he was born here in the States, uh, in Chicago. Uh, but his parents, my grandparents, uh, emigrated from Iran, from the Ormi region, from uh, Gütapa. Um, and uh, my mom is ethnic German. Uh, her parents, uh, my grandparents on my mom's side, uh, emigrated from Germany to Chicago. And uh, my parents met in Chicago, and uh, I was born right in the heart of downtown Chicago at Northwestern Memorial Hospital. My dad's father, my paternal grandfather, uh, was a chef, and he worked his way. He went first to Germany and worked his way as a chef through Germany, uh, eventually to uh, Bremerhaven, which is a port city in northern Germany. And he came over from uh, Germany, and my, um, my grandmother, um, she went to Russia first. I, I get confused whether it was um, Tbilisi or Baku, somewhere in, in that area, Azerbaijan, I think. Um, and I think she also came from Germany as well on a ship from Bremerhaven. I've always loved languages. I've always been fascinated by languages. It's just something intrinsic about me, I guess. Um, but um, when I realized how special and unique our language is, um, how rare it is, and how ancient it is, uh, it really energized me um, and, and, and sparked a passion in me to, to really make an effort to learn to speak it. Um, I asked my father to teach it to me, but he was of the, uh, of the generation of immigrants that when you came to the United States, you wanted to kind of shed all your, um, anything that was ethnic, you know, and so he sort of uh, resisted uh, teaching me. You know, I'd say, Dad, Dad, will you teach me how to speak Assyrian? And he'd be like, ah, what do you want to use it for? Ah, what are you going to do with it? You know, and I'd be like, Dad, come on, this is like really uh, so such a, a special thing, you know. And um, eventually, um, later on, um, around the mid-2000s, I finally got around to sitting him down. And I was like, OK, you're going <laughs> to teach me Assyrian? And, I, I sat him down and I recorded him, you know, like conjugating verbs, giving me vocabulary. Um, I tried to get as much basic uh, 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 information about the language that I could, that I could use to, you know, construct sentences and to speak the language. Uh, unfortunately, he uh, passed away before I was able to finish uh, doing that. And uh, but uh, now I'm. I'm trying again to uh, uh, to learn the language, and I'm taking uh, classes, different classes. I retired from the travel industry, so I'm able to um, travel um, on a standby basis. Um, so it's, um, but even if even if that wasn't the case, um, if if I was able to afford it to actually um, pay for the tickets, um, I would I would still do it. It's totally worth it because our language is something so special, uh, really sacred in a way, and um, it's so important that we that we all uh, keep speaking it, um, uh, that we learn it, uh, that we uh, teach our children to speak the language and to um, respect and appreciate uh, what our language means. I went to the Assyrian Convention of 2002 um, in Detroit, and they had a seminar that was, um, and one of the speakers at this, it was about our language and the, um, teaching the language. And there was a gentleman, uh, Michael Mamu, I think his name is, from Sweden. And he was, uh, uh, he spoke about how uh, there was a pr program in the government of Sweden that um, actually uh, funded um, uh, um, like programs or classes for different uh, ethnic um, groups in Sweden to, to teach their language and to preserve their language. And, um, uh, and he spoke about that and he, he even, uh, I think he put together like some textbooks and, and, and uh, class material and stuff. So, um, so that was when I first became aware that there was um, a method of teaching it, a formal way of teaching it, outside of the homeland. Um, and then, um, fast forward to um, 2014, um, I uh, was at the Assyrian Convention in Las Vegas, and. Um, uh, I met an Assyrian guy from Los Angeles, 
and he invited me to come out to visit him there in LA and while I was there I was like hey can we go to the Assyrian church I'd like to go to the um, the church service and go to one of the Assyrian churches um, and uh, after the service um, I um, saw a little flyer that said that, that they were offering a, a class in um, how to speak Assyrian I was like oh awesome you know so um, so I started uh, flying out to LA to uh, to take the class that they were offering there. So that was actually the first, uh, that was the first formal class that, that I took in Assyrian. It was, it was at uh, St. Mary's uh, Assyrian Church of the East in Tarzana. My favorite was the one at the St. Mary's in Tarzana because the instructor was, uh, was really funny. You know, <laughs> he made us laugh and, and uh, so he made it fun. Um, uh, he, uh, and for someone who wasn't formally trained in, in linguistics, uh, he really knew his his stuff, you know, his material, the the language. So, um, that I'm really enjoying the the class that I'm taking now here in San Jose because uh, the the instructor is gearing the class uh, specifically towards people like myself who don't really speak the language at all, and we're starting from scratch. It's crucial for um, Assyrian parents to. Um, um, engender a, a, a passion, respect, and um, appreciation for our language and to want to learn how to, to speak it, to read it, and write it. Um, so I, I think the, the interest in learning the language really, um, for the most part, comes from the parents. It's the parents' responsibility to do that. Um, so I, I um, but uh, the youth are doing a lot. The, 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 there's a lot of the young Assyrians working, for example, here in Silicon Valley, um, uh, and also in Chicago. Uh, that are um, um, know a lot about technology and, and software and, and all those kinds of things. Um, there's a lot of new, exciting apps and uh, websites and things. So um, I have a lot of hope for our language uh, and our youth because uh, uh, of how they're. Um, successfully um, uh, leveraging uh, digital technology to, to, to teach and preserve uh, our language. I recommend every Assyrian to go back to the homeland. Um, you know, um, it's just so important. It's just, um, it's transformational. You know, um, you, it's just, I mean, there's nothing like actually going there, where our people are from, uh, to um, to garner an appreciation for our situation and our people and the land, and it's just um, yeah. Every I think every Assyrian that, that can should go go to Assyria. Yeah, it changes you. My message to uh, the Assyrian people um, as a whole, but especially the youth is that um, you know our, our forefathers um, sacrificed and suffered so much to preserve our language and our culture over thousands and thousands of years and it's it's such a rare unique and, and special language it, it's it's I mean it's thousands of years old it, it has uh, religious significance because it's the closest living language from what I understand to the language that Jesus and the Apostles spoke um, and also only a handful of people um, speak it. You know, there's only, I think there's less than three million Assyrians worldwide. Uh, I think more than half of them are in the diaspora. So, um, you know, even linguists uh, categorize the Assyrian language as threatened. So it's, it's crucial, it's crucial that, that the Assyrians uh, make an extra special effort to continue to speak the language and to teach the language uh, to our youth. It really is important uh, for the Assyrians to make it known that we exist. Because think about it, how can you care about a people or a culture that you don't even know exist? Most of the, the majority of the world's population don't know, even, even know that we exist. I mean, everybody knows about Armenians and, uh, for example, um, which is great, you know. Um, you tell somebody you're Armenian and they're like, and they know what that means. So we need to get to, to a point where we don't always have to constantly explain uh, who we are or that we even exist. Um, 
And then uh, once that happens, it's important to to share with non Assyrians the, the richness uh, of our culture. You know, uh, we have so much to our culture, um, you know, uh, uh, aside from the language, you know, there's, there's dress, uh, you know, uh, there's cuisine, there's dance, there's literature, um, art, you know, uh, so uh, it's just so much to our culture. Um, so it's important for, uh, number one, for the world to know we exist, and, and then um, second to that, the richness of our culture. Uh, the multifaceted um, aspect of it, you know. Uh, so, uh, but you know, it's the language is crucial because when I was in Assyria, uh, we met um, with uh, a, a women's uh, like support uh, program or group, and the leader of the the woman that was in charge of the program, I asked her about our language, and she said to me, uh, "We're nothing without our language." And I think, uh, in a lot of ways, that's true. So, um, you know, I think first and foremost, we need to, to preserve our language and the, our writing. We have an incredibly beautiful alphabet. Um, I'm really into calligraphy. And uh, when I first, uh, I found a book once when I was a teenager in a room in our home, we called it The Den, and uh, it was a book on on the Assyrian language, and I had the writing in Assyrian, and I looked at it and I was like, wow, that's really beautiful, that is so cool. And I was like, so as soon, the moment I saw it, I was like, I've got to learn how to, to do this. And uh, it took a lot of years, but uh, you know, thankfully, um, you guys had that class here in San Jose on the calligraphy. I was like, I was so thankful when you offered that class, it was so cool, um, learning how to, to uh, um, to, to draw the letters, because I mean, our, our alphabet is also very beautiful, so, yeah. I think that um, the youth should um, not only take it upon themselves uh, to, uh, if they already know how to speak the language, to continue to speak it, and for those that don't know how to speak it or don't speak it well, to really make a special effort to really learn how to, to speak it well and if possible to, to read and write and I just want to let um, the people know, the youth especially again, that the, the, the reading and the writing uh, seems very intimidating, but actually that was the easiest part for me, was learning our alphabet. Um, I'm in a kind of a funny situation where um, you know, I can read and write uh, our language. Uh, I can look up the, uh, some, something written in Assyrian and I can form the words, but I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> but the, the point I'm trying to make is that it's not as intimidating or difficult uh, as it seems. So if you already know how to speak it, I mean, you're more than halfway there. So make, make that special extra effort to not only to improve your language skills, but also to learn how to read and write, because our alphabet is, it really is a beautiful alphabet. Um, I'd also like to emphasize the importance um, to our youth of wor working towards the Assyrians establishing either uh, an autonomous region, uh, for example, the Nineveh, Nineveh Plains province, or uh, ideally our own nation state, because it's crucial, I, I think, to the preservation of our language and, of course, our culture. Because when a people are in diaspora, there, there's so many pressures um, and forces working against one uh, um, preserving and keeping their, their culture. So, um, I'd like to say um, to my fellow Assyrians that it's really important that you record um, your family stories because, you know, for example, my grandparents uh, have passed on and, and they take with them all the, the rich stories and um, so much information. Um, so it's really important to to talk to them and, if possible, uh, record um, their stories. Uh, you know what they went through, uh, how they how they how they came to whatever country that they they emigrated to. It's really important um, to get that to record that be, before they leave us. Maraba to Shamiram Media for um, giving me this opportunity. I'm really honored and thankful um, to be given this opportunity to to share with the Assyrian community how important uh, our language is 
uh, well, really how special and unique and, and almost sacred our language is and, and how important it is for us to, uh, to preserve it, to save it, and to teach it to future generations. Mm -hmm.